Pastor Walter Turner, Faith in Christ Church, located at 5735 North Galt Avenue here in Fort Payne, Alabama. So glad that you've tuned in with us today. and It's our desire that we bless through the Word of God and that uh, leave you with a thought, leave you with something that would inspire you to draw closer to God. Uh, we're living in times where there's not a one of us that don't need to hear from heaven and get a divine move of God in our lives. You know, all through the history of America, there's been times when God has given great moves of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the Lord would visit people, and people would get saved, and would see the power of God in demonstrations of healings and, and deliverance. And these are things that are so needed, needful in the time that we live in. It's not uh, the traditional form formality of just going to church, being in a building, go there, come out as we came in. But it should be something in that service, something in the meeting place, in the house of God that should inspire us to want to draw closer to God. Because I know that the God that we serve is, is real. And the things that we read that he has done in times past, He's still capable of doing the same things. He's still a miracle worker. Don't ever let the devil deceive you into thinking that God has changed. That's impossible for God to change. He is the only constant that there is in this life. And we realize that we pray to a God that never changes and he knows all things and he's able to do anything that we request of him. And today it's our request that we just want to see God move. We want to be more like Jesus have more of a love in our hearts, a greater love, let's put it that way, a perfected love, that love that would not allow us to fear anything, even if it came to death and our stand for the Lord, and if it cost us our life, that we would have the ability to even give our lives for the gospel's sake. This is what God is requiring of his people today. So again, we greet you and we thank you for tuning in. Appreciate those that have stopped me and told me that they've watched the program and how they enjoyed the program. Love hearing from you. And uh, would appreciate more and more if you just let them know here in the station that you appreciate the job that they're doing. I know that there are other ministers that come on this uh, TV station as well. And we're all out laboring for the same cause, and that is for the kingdom of the Lord. I do want to extend an invitation to you come to our church as I said, we're located at 5735 North Galt Avenue, Fort Payne, Alabama. And uh, our services, our main services on Saturday at 12 o'clock. Love to have you to come. God has really been moving. We've been having uh, great services, really have. Spirit of the Lord has really been touching our lives. And, and we see the Lord working. Because our cry is to have nothing but God. We want nothing but the... There's only one true and living God and God being a spirit and he wants to inhabit the lives of men and women that are believers. He wants to take over the lives of people, save us and deliver us from everything that we need to be delivered from. And I'm thanking him for what I feel and for what I know and my expectation is high. I don't know anything else but, but to continue to believe God. But come be with us Saturday at 12 o'clock if you can find a means and a way, come on and join in. And we'll all lift up the Lord together. Wednesday nights we have Bible study. It begins at 4 o'clock. Been great Bible studies just taking the word of God, breaking the bread of life, sharing and seeking for greater understanding and wisdom that only God can give. Because as it says out of James 1, any man that lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And if we need wisdom, which we do when it comes to the word, we need the proper understanding of the scriptures. And we need the knowledge of it to know how to live, how to conduct ourselves and to carry ourselves in this life. And we have prayer service, strive to have prayer service uh, four days out of the week, Monday, Tuesday, 
Thursday and Friday around 4 o'clock or so. Come join in and pray. I know there's not a person out there that doesn't need to pray more. I know I need to. And then we have prayer with Grace Presbyterian Church on Wednesday right after Bible study. And it has been a wonderful, wonderful fellowship with the people of God there at Grace and the ones that assemble with us in prayer. And I'd just like to thank each one of them for their participation and knowing that the more that we are have praying and the more that we do pray, the greater the results are going to be. And let us continue on to do what God has called us to do. I'm getting ready to go before the Lord in prayer and ask that you would join in with us as we pray. And let us pray in belief, not doubting anything, but anything that we ask of God to believe that he will grant it to us. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we not only bring ourselves, but we bring everyone that Lord would join in with us as we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and pray and ask that the blood of Christ would cleanse us and cover us. Anything in our lives that is not like you, any sin, anything, God, you take it away, remove it, and help us, Lord, to be a holy people unto you, a people that are sanctified for your service and for your honor and for your glory and a people that are seeking to know their God, to do those things that you declared we would do. I ask you, Lord, to touch our nation. Touch this world in revival, Lord. Visit this, us in this day and in this time as you have in times past and give great visitations, Lord. Do it now. Bring a, a harvest in. Bring in the lost and the backslidden. Bring the church closer to you. And help us all to be bound together by that same love. That love that is only your love, Lord. The love that is a love that is a strengthening love. A sure love. A love, God, that has no respect of persons. No partiality in it. But a love that you've already manifested and shown unto us all. In this season, Lord, where men are celebrating Easter... And God, we always recognize thy resurrection. We recognize that you died and you rose again. And thank you for the victory that you've delivered unto us as believers. That Lord, as we, we live because of you. And our lives are hidden in you today. And I know that Lord, if we must go the way of the grave, that we already have the victory over, the, over death, hell, and the grave. We have victory through you, Lord, because you paid the price. Thank you for your coming. Thank you for entering into this world to fulfill the word and the will of God. Thank you, God, for, thank you, Lord, for your example of humility and pureness and, and looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Oh, have mercy upon us in a time such as this, Lord. We pray for our president and all that are in leadership. We pray for the pastors and for the churches, God, and asking you to move in the houses of God and keep your ministers encouraged. Help us, Lord, not to be weary in well-doing, knowing that in due season we'll reap if we faint not. And help us, God, to always maintain that burden and that concern for the flock. Help us, Lord, to be able to labor together. But this is a journey that we do need one another. We need the help of God. Need the power of God's anointed. I pray for all that are sick and that need a healing touch. Increase our faith that we can stand upon the word and believe what it is said that with thy stripes that we are healed. And we know that without a shadow of doubt that you do not lie, but the things that you speak are nothing but truth. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you for living in a nation at this time where we have liberty and freedom and we have peace and God you see the troubles that are on the horizon but help us to get anchored in you find that hiding place because you are our hiding place Lord you are our fortress you are our secure place we're in that nothing can do us any harm and God even for our families and the generations to come I want you to move for our young people and to cause their minds and their hearts to Seek after the Lord that God you can pour out of your spirit on them as well. And that they may fulfill the scriptures. Lord bring it to pass in the life of the believers today. 
that God, we can see the handiwork of the Lord and we can see the power of your manifested abilities. Thank you for all that you are and for who you are today. We honor you today, Lord. Go with us as we minister this word and you give us, God, peace and give us wisdom and let me not speak anything that I should not speak, but everything that I say, let it be edifying to the body. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I'd like to go to the word of God, and if you've got your Bibles, I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter 4. And today we're going to talk about the word of God. God's word is a powerful word. God's word is a creative word. God's word is an unfailing word. And if what we should be doing in our lives as Christians is studying this word and being sure that it is within us and that we're doing all that the word of God teaches us to do. If there is an area in your life to worry and you know that you're weak when it comes to fulfilling God's scriptures, this is why we pray and we ask God for help. Lord, help me to develop into that that you want me to be. Help me to be the disciple. Help me to be the saint of God, pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Because we know if we do those things, and God withholds no good things from us. And all he wants us to do is to trust in his word. I'm going to read first a little scripture out of John, the gospel of John. And the Bible said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Praise the Lord for that. Then out of verse 14 it says, And the word was made flesh, and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 16 says, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace said, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I love the fact that in the very beginning when there was nothing in the beginning and darkness was upon the face of the deep and God stepped out and began to speak his word. And everything that God spoke, it began to take place because the word is God, God is his word. And when God says a thing, it has to come to pass. It's already established. So when he began to say, let there be light, the creative power of the word brought light into existence. And when he began to separate the waters from the waters and the dry land appeared, all because of obedience to God's word. There's not a time in this word that we read in this Bible that we believe in and I know that God is still speaking. Don't get me wrong. There's more things that God is speaking. These scriptures that we read, these, uh, the Bible that we read and we believe in, God is greater than just the 66 books. There's more to God than just what we read out of this book. God is still yet constantly speaking because he knows that each life needs proper direction. And he does not mind giving us counsel instruction oh, he, he wants us to know his love because if he speaks to us and we hear and we believe what he says find yourself God help me to believe everything that you tell me don't let me waver nor doubt in any form or any way because if the elements and the things of this life every created thing that is made was made by you and you spoke it into existence and even now things are subject to you <clears throat> storms, all of these things are still subject to the voice of God. And when God says, let there be peace, he said, peace be still, automatically the word of God begins to perform what he says to do. He began to say out of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11, it said, let us labor therefore to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. In verse 12, he said, The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Let's stop there for a minute. The word of God is quick. How long do we think when God spoke something in the beginning, did it take it? 
instantaneously it began to happen because God's word is quick. And it's said and powerful, and it is. There's nothing like the word of God. The only way that I know that people were converted or have been truly changed is that the word of God found them and began to deliver them and to bring an awareness into your life that, Lord, I'm undone. When I hear of the things that you are teaching and telling me, Lord, and if I'm living the life of, a, of sin, the word convicts sin, condemns sin. And that word that God begins to speak finds its way right to the heart. Uh, truth is something that is, can never be hid. You cannot deny it. It is the truth. The, the word of God, when it comes, it finds out where you are. Uh, you can be serving God for years, but when God begins to minister his word and speak to it, it's going to even show us our shortcomings. The word of God, when it comes, it automatically enters into the ear and it finds its place to the heart of man. I love God. I love the fact that we serve a God, that his words are words of authority. I love the fact that we serve a God that all things are come subject unto the higher power. And he said it is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. No matter how that uh, uh, the precision instruments that they use in the operating rooms and all. You can take lasers and things like that. They don't compare to the word of God because God's word never leaves a scar even. When that word finds you, it finds you, and it, you never know that that body had been touched by the word of God until you start seeing the fruitful results of belief in God's word. It said it pierces even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And it says, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This is why it's so precious in serving the Lord. Because when we would do good, evil is present. And many times the Lord has had to give me scripture and reminders in the word of God. Quicken it into my spirit to cause me to know there are certain things that I can't do. Things that I cannot act upon. But the only things I can act upon is God's word. Learning to submit to God. Yield unto God. When God begins to speak to you, don't fight him. Don't resist him. But rather give yourself over to him. I find in the word of God where there was a man by the name, uh, 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 there was one that the Lord had sent his word. And he began to tell him to go. And to minister his word. His name was Jonah. And as he began to speak to Jonah. He told him to go down to Nineveh land. And to preach the word. And to tell the people there to repent. For God's judgment was going to come upon them. But the thing that Jonah did was rebelled against God's word. And any time you rebel against God's word. You'll find yourself in deep trouble. And Jonah began to get a ticket and said he was going to go to Tarsus, thinking that he could escape from that word that the only thing God wanted him to do is obey. Because not only was his soul in jeopardy, but the souls of all of these others that he had to bring God's word to, they were in jeopardy as well. But he paid the fare and he boarded the ship, and while in the midst of the ocean, the Lord allowed a storm to come upon him. And the mariners began to do everything that they know to do, trying to get out of the storm, pedal out of it. And they realized there had to be, there was an issue there. There was a problem there. Something needed to be resolved. And they began to inquire among the men. And when the captain found Jonah, he found him fast asleep. Jonah thinking that he had escaped his responsibility, but God was yet requiring it of him. And so he asked him where he was, and he told him how he was a Hebrew and how that he worshipped and feared the true and living God. In the meantime, these men continued to row, and they thought they were trying to make sure that there was not a soul that was lost on that ship. And they began to throw some of their tackling overboard, things they thought that they would lighten the load. But Jonah began to let them know that the problem was he. 
The fact is that he didn't do what God told him to do. And then he recognized how that he had erred concerning God's divine will. But Jonah began to tell them, said, you throw me overboard. And you know, you think in the midst of a storm, somebody would even ask or request, said, throw me overboard. I'm the cause. And if I'm thrown out, if I'm out of the ship, then everything else is going to be at peace. And time Jonah was thrown out of the ship, there was a great fish that God had prepared for him to be swallowed up by. And the fish swallowed Jonah up and automatically a calm came into that sea. And the men and all began to fear God greatly because they found out how much it is necessary in order for, for us to obey God. And Jonah now was found himself entrapped inside of a fish. God has many diverse ways to chasten us. And he will do it because he loves us. And when he sends his word to chasten us, to correct us, and all he wants us to do, when the word is spoken, the Bible just said that the word of God is quick. When it, you hear it, God wants us immediately to accept it in the heart. And if there's something that he's wanting us to do, to automatically begin to do it. And Jonah had realized now, here I am, inside of a fish, a great fish. Seaweeds all around about him. The smell of fish. Anytime that you take fresh fish and you begin to gut them and open them up, there's an odor that comes out because of all of the intestines and everything. And here Jonah was on the inside of a fish. Very limited space, a room. But he found his spirit being broken and he began to humble himself and he turned and he began to pray to that same God that he had disobeyed. And the good part about God, I love the fact that he knows how to deal with human beings. God could send a word and he could have destroyed Jonah. He could have sent him in the midst of sharks and had him to die and laid that burden, that word upon somebody else that he knew would obey him and go on. But God being the long-suffering and merciful God he is, took time and dealt with Jonah. A Jonah was in the belly of this fish for three days and three nights. And here he was crying out, humbling himself, repenting of his ways. And God knew how to break him down to cause him to submit. Have you ever been in a church service and the word of God was preached and it begins to find men and women and they can't be content because at the end of it, God is wanting them to repent. And maybe there's a conviction Lord has laid upon them and wanting them just to come and to pray. It's so easy to get delivered from our condemnation, get delivered from our sins when we begin to pray and to call on that same God for his mercy. And Jonah did it. And the Lord then began to deal with the fish. He said, now I want you to get rid of that backslidden preacher and you regurgitate him up on the land. And, and Jonah didn't need any type of guidance to find the city of Nineveh when he was placed upon the earth and he gave God praise. Now, now Nineveh, they said, was a three-day journey. But Jonah had a word within him that he knew he had to deliver. He knew that there's no way that he could keep this word within him and not grow through something else again. One time was enough. There are many people that God chastens, continues to chasten, and they won't submit but when we learn, Lord, I can't fight against you and win. The only thing I can do is give in and obey you. It's a great calling in being called a preacher. And it's a lot of responsibility in being called a minister. But not only in the minister's life, but in the life of a believer. When we say that we're going to heaven, the obedient are going to be the ones that make it. The ones that follow God's instructions, hear his word, and live by it on a daily basis are the ones that's going to make it. Because you may not have been called to be a preacher. Maybe the Lord hadn't laid that, that calling into your life or that gift into your life. But know this, we should always fear the Lord. Oh, do what he says do. Don't want to do anything to displease him, but we want to set an example to the world because others need to know what is required to be a true Christian. 
And Jonah, he made it to the city of Nineveh in one day's journey after the Lord had chastened him and after the word had came to him. He made it there to that city and Jonah began to cry out and to begin to speak what thus saith the Lord and to let the people go know that God had seen all of their sins and their iniquities and he wanted them to repent or judgment was getting ready to come to that city. Again, how merciful God is. Evidently, their sins had been so, uh, so mighty. Their sins had been so plentiful that it had gotten the attention of God. God in heaven looking down and displeasure began to set in his spirit knowing that these are people that I have created not for this purpose to sin against me but that they might know me and that I might deliver them. So Jonah began to preach this message of repentance. And the Bible said, And the word of God found its place even all the way into the king's palace. See, we, it's, it's a powerful word that we speak when we speak God's word. And it found the king. And the king began to tell the whole nation of Nineveh, whole city of Nineveh, we are going to go on a fast. And we are going to humble ourselves in sackcloth and in ashes. He said, I don't even want our livestock to even eat. I want them to be brought under subjection that God may spare them as well. And if we pray and we call upon the Lord, that peradventure God will have a change of heart and not bring judgment upon us. And the Lord saw this, and he saw that city as it began to turn from their wicked ways. It's a loving thing to have God's word come to you to where you begin to be God conscious. A lot of people that sin, I know when I was in sin, my mind was not upon the Lord. And a lot of times I didn't want to retain it. I didn't want to hear about God. I wanted to do what I was doing. But now I consider it such a precious thing when God's word begins to come to me. And the word of God can be an encourager. The word of God gives hope. The word of God gives us faith. The word of God is love itself being manifested. Because in that word, he loved us so that he didn't give, leave us in, a, in this world without instructions from him and knowing what he's requiring. And Jonah had begun to be angry. He, he decided he wanted to see the results of his preaching. I myself, when I preach, I want to see the signs that God would confirm the word and the people would truly obey. If the Lord were to give me a message on repentance, I want to see people come to the altar. I want to see people broken before the Lord. If God gives me a message about healing, I want there to be some signs that their word is confirmed and there be some healings done in that house. If God gives a message by the, about the Holy Ghost, I want the evidence that God visits the house and begins to live in the lives of people and fills them with, us, with His Spirit. Because when God speaks... It is something that God will do. What he says he will do. He cannot lie. For God is not man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Once he had spoken it, he shall make it good. And Jonah observed as he took this gourd and he sat out and he watched to see what was going to happen to the city of Nineveh. All of these souls, people that would have entered into hell had it not been for the fact that the Lord gave a visitation. And the Lord said, even though all of this sin, it upsets me, I'll give you another chance. There might be somebody out there today under the sound of my voice, and God has given you opportunity after opportunity to turn from your ways. Take heed. Don't let the Lord allow any other destructions to come into your life. You might say, well, I don't know what to do. I'm bound. I'm in this thing. I can tell you what to do. Turn to God. Find yourself a Bible-believing church. People that believe in the power of deliverance. People that live according to God's word. Go and let God begin to deal with you. And remember when you get there, it's something how the devil would try to convince you that uh, others need help as well. But this is not about others. This is about you and God. And if one thing about it, if you want to see Jesus, you want all of your sins and your iniquities to be blotted out. You want a life that is clean and pure. 
that God himself is pleased with. And go and find that house of God and begin to let that spirit that is on you, that binds you, turn all things over into the hand of God as you begin to speak your words to God. Our words have power as well. When they're spoken out of sincerity, when you think of a, a sinner, somebody that doesn't know God and, and their life is full of sin, but yet they can approach a holy God and all they do is begin to ask God, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. A sinner comes to God and his words begin to move the Savior, begin to move the Lord in your favor and he begins to take away all of our sins. Our sins, though they be red as scarlet, he said he'd make them white as snow. Remember no more, no more. All of a sudden God begins to take a creature that had the nature of sin and begins to transform it and to give you the nature of a son of God, to give you the nature of Jesus Christ because you got delivered by his word. All it takes is one moment in God's presence. All it takes is one moment in hearing his word and being convicted in the heart and allowing that word to do what it will. It is a cleanser. Uh, his word is more powerful than anything in this earth. They talk about these bombs that men, nuclear bombs and all that man has created. But God's word is more powerful than that because God's word is not bent on destruction but God's word has been on helping and delivering and saving. Thank God for the power's word. Jonah observed and he saw Nineveh turn and God had mercy upon that whole city. And the Lord had to teach Jonah a lesson. You have compassion upon a gourd, but you don't have compassion upon the souls of men. If you're an individual that is called to ministry, oh, there's something you need to do to stir yourself up. And realize that the souls are dying out in this world. The Bible said as Jesus began to teach his disciples. He said look upon the fields for they're white for harvest. He said but labor's a few. When he talks about labor's he wants somebody that's willing to go and speak what he says speak. To do what he says do. To have mercy and compassion. Where would we be today if it wasn't for the fact that somebody preached the word of God to us and it brought a change in our lives? Where would we be if God's word never came to us? We've gone through many tests. There are many of you that have gone through some life-trying tests. I'm talking about things where it was life and death matters. And maybe God came and began to speak to you and to tell you that your work wasn't over. I know I've got ministers in my congregation that God has come to them and spoken to them and let them know I'm going to heal you and I'm going to raise you up and your work's not done yet. Oh, how can we give up on God? All it takes is Him speaking. Situations change. And then God tells us to speak His word as well. There is such power in the word of God. If you need peace, you tell God. Lord, you say it. You would keep my heart and mind in perfect peace, Lord, through Christ Jesus. If you keep my heart and mind, God, I bring your word to you because I need peace. Too many are troubled today, and all we need is the word of God to be applied to our situations. If you're full of worry, doubting, unbelief, unsure, don't know what the next moment holds, or worried about this world, and where the world is going and how that things are going to happen, whether you're going to die or not, we all are going to die. I can assure you that. But one thing about it, we're not to worry about it. God wants us to live. I'm talking about live in the word. Live in the joy of his presence. If you can't, you don't even have to be in church and you can speak God's word. You could travel up and down these roads and just meditate upon the word of God. He said he'd keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. So if we meditate upon God's word, Lord, put your word within us. Put this same word that you spoke in the beginning, that spirit, Lord, spirit, not letters, but the spirit of the word of God. And give me divine instructions by your word, Lord. You said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't hearken unto. 
So if we know the voice of God, we know that he'll not tell us anything that is detrimental for us, but it's all positive things. It's all good things that God has in store. But a nation was saved because a preacher that really didn't want to preach the word of God, a city was saved, and a man that really didn't want to obey God. But when he did, God backed his word up. Today make us willing, make us obedient. Lord, I want to be like Jesus to the point to where I love seeing people saved. I read out of the word of God, if God took murderers, he took people, Lord, that had done things that were so ugly and spiteful, but yet and still, when his word came to them, it, it took everything out of their lives that was evil. When God's word gets inside of you, it'll take hatred out of you. We live in a nation that is divided, divided because some feel superior to others. We live in a nation because some allow tradition, the teachings of others, to say that God really doesn't mean for us to love some like we do others. God is love. And this is why you need the word in you. Anytime you can have the, have the word in you, you cannot despise anybody because you'll find the scriptures will convict you of evil. If you find yourself condemning somebody, God himself will begin to chasten you and to let you know you could be in that same situation. This is why we want the word in us. Lord, I, I had a mother-in-law years ago that used to say, said, I'd rather be in the word than I would in heaven. She said, the reason being is because heaven and earth shall pass away. So, but God said, my word will never fail. And if God's word will never fail, let us stay in that place where God's word can come to us. Always have an ear. Be listening. Be sensitive to the spirit. People say, well, God talked to you. He sure does. He'll talk to anybody that will listen to him. Talk to anybody that wants to communicate with him. The Lord loves fellowship. He loves the divine presence of being with humans. Before Adam and Eve fell, he came and he would commune with them. In the evening time, he would come because these were his creation. He made them to keep the garden. He loved them so much. And the Lord loves us today. As he loved Adam, he loves us. As he loved any of the apostles, he loves us. There's no diversity in God's love. He does not love us. He said, Jacob, I love and Esau, I hate. And the reason was is because Esau had a spirit that was contrary to God. But to have that spirit of God living on the inside of you in obedience to his word, clothed in it, letting the word wash us, letting the word sanctify us, God is well pleased with us. And the word commands us to do certain things. It commands us to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. I, I ask the Lord to help me to do these things. Fulfill his word. One day, those that have fulfilled God's word will hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And when I think upon what the Bible said when Jesus began to tell them, There is none good save one, and that is God. But in, in return, he began to tell us at the end of the journey, when the faithful servants of his will have ended their works on this earth and stand before him, he'll call them good and faithful. How is goodness going to come out of us? The only way is that God be in us. His word be alive within our being. And when his word is alive within us, we're going to find us doing fruitful things, good things, one to another. Caring and praying one for another. Sharing in the love. Sharing in the encouragement. Giving hope to somebody that is despondent. Not allowing ourselves to be separated one from another. But rather drawing closer to God that we can draw closer one to another. It's my desire to make heaven my home. Heaven is a place that as far as my comprehension goes right now, I can't even fathom. To where there is such a genuine love and a purity among people. To where nobody despises no one. To where the spirit of, spirit of God is forever present. There is no devil to contend with. There is not one that is trying to provoke or bring temptation into your life. And even then on this earth the Bible teaches us about not yielding to temptation. 
For if we yield, we sin. The Bible tells us to submit ourselves to God. How do you submit yourselves to God? Do what he says do. Simply do what he says do. Mary had came to the wedding. And she began to tell the Lord some things. And the Lord began to let her know. He said, what have I to do with you? He said, I'm about my father's business. And Mary then began to change, have a whole change of heart. And she began to tell the servants that were there at that wedding. She said, whatever he tells you to do, do that. And as God's servant today, I'm telling you, whatever he says for you to do, do that. I would not advise anyone, if you're going through trouble in, in your marriage or in your home, I wouldn't tell somebody to walk off or anything else. I'd tell you to seek the face of God. Because if I give somebody advice, I want to advise them according to God's word. Any minister, anybody that you go to that really fears the Lord, they will not impulsively give you any type of words. But they will begin to seek God's faith because we want to know what he wants. What is the will of God concerning these matters? And once God speaks about it, that's when change begins to take place, when we begin to follow those instructions. Men of old always inquired of the Lord. There's not a time that you don't read to where the ones that really feared God, they inquired. They wanted to know, Lord, what is your mindset? What is the will for this situation? Today, we need to be praying, God, what is your will for us in this life? Don't let us allow time to pass and generations to go for and still yet we're not done, have done what you told us to do. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the true and living God. Because judgment is executed by him and him alone. When the Lord makes the determination, where are we going? What is our destination? Are we going to heaven are we, or have we made our choice and we're going to hell? Nobody can put somebody in heaven. Talking to a minister friend of mine this week, and he said a lady had called him and asked him to come and to minister at a funeral of her daughter or sister. And said they'd already asked about five other preachers and they had refused to do it. But he said, I'll go. And he said, when I got there, he said, there are two things I told her I require. He said, I'm going to preach what God tells me to preach. And I'm going to preach as long as he tells me to preach. So the lady was in agreement. And he begins to tell me the story of the young lady that had died. She had died of an overdose of drugs. And he began to warn the ones that were alive and well, many of her friends and all, and telling them to repent and to come out of their sinful ways, come out of drug addiction, come out of being bound by these spirits of sex and fornication, adultery, lying spirits that had captivated their lives. He said there were many things that he said that God had laid upon his heart to minister to him. Because if preachers don't reveal what sin is, people will continue on in their sins. But when sin is revealed, the knowledge of knowing that what you're doing is wrong, it's time to turn to God. And he said this lady began to tell him, said, uh, I thought you would say something good about my daughter. And he said, well, all I can say is when I saw her, she seemed like she was happy. But as far as a preacher being able to put somebody in heaven that God has said, well, they, can't, they went to heaven, we can't do those things. Only God knows. And I know one thing, that we want to be very sure of what we say. It is good when we can be quiet sometimes, not speak our opinions. God, I pray that the Lord teaches me to be quiet. I, I thought of how that they brought this woman that was caught in the very act of adultery and they wanted the Lord to condemn her because they knew, according to the Mosaic law, put this woman to death. And they felt they were basing it upon what God would do. Little did they know that the Lord had brought grace and mercy. And so the Lord kept silent as they began to <coughs> inquire what he would do. And they stooped down and he wrote in the sand. And when he lifted up his head, he began to make this statement. He said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And the Bible said conviction came at his word. And from the oldest to the least, to the youngest, they all began to walk away. And the Lord rose and looked at the woman. He said, woman, where are thine accusers? 
And she began to say, Lord, I have none. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. At his word, that woman was delivered from a death sentence. At his word, she was set free. A person might say, you mean to tell me she was saved because he told her to go and sin no more? She was saved. He left his word with her, and she had the power through God's word and the instructions from the Lord not to sin again. And I believe that that woman was a saved vessel. Thank God for his mercies. <clears throat> Thank God for his grace. Thank God for revealing unto us how merciful he is. That though we are still yet not made perfect, but God is still yet working on us. Still yet allowing his word to come to us. Whatever area that is needed to be sent, that he can build us up. and That we can be made complete in him. We love him today and we thank him so much. Thank him because he is our God. We thank him because he's so real to us. And this word that was written years ago is still yet a powerful word today. And no matter what, let us apply it to our lives. Let us live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Because that's where life truly is, is in doing what the word tells us to do. Thank you for tuning in today. It is our prayer that you've been blessed. Let us all follow God's instructions. We love you. Take heed to what I was saying about uh, the word of God and coming to our church, letting you know there is a house of God. There are houses of God where God's word is being ministered today. In Jesus' name, be blessed. As we come before you with singing today, God, we just say how awesome you are today. And we worship you. We worship you, God. We know that you can move mountains, God. We know that you can do the impossible. And we praise you today. Hallelujah. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Say, my God. My God is awesome. He heals. Heals me when I'm broken. Straight.